Hello again. Um, I'm going to present the award to, for scholarship um, to Greg Gardner, who's written the book Wealth, Poverty, and Charity in Jewish Antiquity. Charity is central to the Jewish tradition, and our prayers during the days of awe over the past couple of weeks, we heard that tshuva, tefillah, and tzedakah, common, commonly translated as repentance, prayer, and charity, could lead to our redemption. But do we really know what charity is in the Jewish tradition? Wealth, Poverty, and Charity in Jewish Antiquity by Greg Gardner, the founding chair of the Jewish Studies Program at the University of British Columbia, is full of surprises. The book explores the origins of these concepts, how the earliest rabbis from the time of Talmud reflected on the notions of wealth, poverty, and charity, and how their interpretations differed from and informed how Jews approach these concepts today. Professor Gardner also shows how Christian attitudes towards wealth, poverty, and charity evolved from the ideas of the ancient rabbis and where they diverged. The scholarship in wealth, poverty, and charity is sophisticated, and yet the book is superbly readable by anybody with an interest in Jewish ethical thought. Please welcome the recipient of the Canadian Jewish Literary Award for scholarship, Greg Gardner. Thank you. I'm truly honored to receive this award. Uh, I will say a little bit about the book uh, in a minute, uh, but first I want to—I have a little bit of uh, gratitude uh, to convey. I'd like to thank the Canadian Jewish Literary Awards, its jury, its supporters. Special thanks to Edward uh, Trapunsky for both the phone call about the award, which is the, the best phone call I received in a long time, um, and for writing the very uh, thoughtful citation and um, your words about uh, the way that the book is written really mean a lot to me. I really put a lot of, try to put a lot of effort into how the ideas are presented. Um, thank you also to Julie Feinberg and New York University and the Kaczynski Center. I would also like to thank my home university, UBC, the University of British Columbia, my department, students and colleagues in the Department of Ancient Mediterranean and Near Eastern Studies who have supported me in countless ways. The Diamond Family of Vancouver has not only endowed the chair that I hold, but has also supported my work, as well as research and teaching in Jewish studies more broadly at UBC. I've also received support from several institutions. I won't list them all, but maybe just a couple of highlights. Um, Michigan Center for Judaic Studies, Hebrew University of Jerusalem, the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council of Canada. Um, I thank my editor, Eric Schmidt, um, and the whole team at the University of California Press who just made this uh, publication process uh, just absolutely a, a wonderful process. Above all, I'd like to thank my family, my parents, uh, Fran and Keith, who are uh, watching on Zoom, my brothers, Kevin and Scott, my extended family, uh, Cindy and Don and the Browns. Above all, my wife, uh, Rabbi Carrie Brown, uh, to whom this book is dedicated. And I thank my two children, Yael and Jonah, um, it means so much to have you here uh, with me today. I love you so much. My work uh, and research generally focuses on ancient Judaism, its history, archaeology, and literature. This includes the ancient rabbis uh, and rabbinic texts, such as the Mishnah, Tosefta, Midrashim, and Talmuds. These are texts that come from the first centuries CE and continue to be read and studied, and for many people, continue to be followed closely as Jewish law to this day. I came to the topic with a background in economics. I was looking for ways to combine my interest in economics with my passion for studying ancient Judaism. I began to explore this first during my MA work at Hebrew University, and then more intently during my doctoral work at Princeton. In 2015, I published my first book, which was on communal giving in early Judaism, particularly the Tamchui and Kupa, the charity fund and the soup kitchen. This was the beginning of collective institutionalized philanthropy in Judaism and would become hallmarks of Jewish life. These are the ancient roots of the, the little blue boxes that I will always remember from my Bubby's home. After my first book, I felt like I still had much more to learn and many more questions to ask and more to hopefully contribute to our understanding of Jewish charity. So in my new book, I argue that the 
earliest rabbis saw the problem of poverty as a problem of wealth, how wealth is created and destroyed, gained and lost, how wealth creates social difference by defining rich versus poor, how wealth is conceptualized, measured, and allocated, and how the rabbis recommend to motivate others to part with their wealth and to give it to the needy. I also discuss how the rabbis' own socioeconomic position influenced their thinking. The ancient rabbis themselves tended to be well off. They had sort of the wherewithal and the means to sit and ponder ideas about Jewish theology and Jewish law. They could not help but see the topic of care for the poor from the perspective of potential givers, more so than recipients. Ultimately, charity, tzedakah, is a commandment that is remarkably incomplete or imperfect. The commandment is to give some of your personal wealth to the poor. There is no commandment to receive. In these ancient texts, the rabbis effectively invented Jewish approaches to charity or tzedakah and philanthropy. Thank you very much again for this honor.